Let us prepare for worship with prayer. Let us pray. We are your people, O God, the sheep of your pasture, the flock you have gathered. Lead us beside still waters, teach us the way of righteousness, and feed us at your table. Through Jesus Christ, our Good Shepherd. Amen. Welcome, friends, to this Lord's Day worship on April 25th, 2021. Let us join together in our responsive call to worship. The Lord Jesus Christ is our shepherd. He lays down his life for his sheep. The Lord Jesus Christ is our shepherd. He knows us and we belong to him. The Lord Jesus Christ is our shepherd. He speaks and we listen for his voice. Let us worship God. If we are honest with ourselves, our hearts condemn us. But God, who knows everything, is greater than our hearts. And God's deep desire for us is mercy, love, and peace. Therefore, let us confess our sin. Lord, have mercy on us. We talk about love, but our actions betray us. We talk about love, but we neglect the poor. We talk about love, but we fail to love one another. Lord, have mercy on us. Forgive us and abide in us by the power of your Spirit, so that our lives may show for Jesus Christ, in whose body we live, and in whose name we pray. Let us join now in silent confession. Amen. We see God's grace with boldness because we trust in Jesus Christ, the one who loves us and laid down his life for us. This is good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. 
The words of the greatest commandment remind us that everything we do should be done in love, love of God and love of neighbor. Let us try to live these words out as we recite them together now. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Let us pray. Lord God, Good Shepherd, by the leading of your Spirit, help us to listen for your voice and follow in your paths all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our first lesson comes from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second lesson comes from John chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, and I have other sheep that are not of this fold, I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father." This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. I'm Addie Cheek, and I'm a senior at Arundel Parrot Academy. Psalm 23 reminds me that the Lord is always with me, guiding me through life, and He is my shepherd, and I am His sheep. The summer before my sophomore year, I had the opportunity to embark on a two-week backpacking, mountain climbing, and whitewater rafting trip in Wyoming and Idaho. I was a timid, anxious 15-year-old girl who was so angry at her parents for making her fly across the country alone. I spent many weeks praying that the Lord would use this trip to help me grow and would give me peace as the trip got closer. I saw the beauty of God's creation and felt His presence a lot on this trip. Whether it was through a pretty sunrise or sunset, the stars as we slept on the beach, the sound of the rain on our tents, the view from the top of the Wind River Valley Mountains, or the cool waters as we whitewater rafted in Idaho. Midway through our trip, we got into a fatal car accident with someone who ran a stop sign. The sounds of the glass breaking and the sirens of the ambulance are forever engraved in my mind. I was filled with fear and anxiety as we sat on the ground for hours waiting for a ride and trying to find cell service. I was terrified to be away from my parents and I so badly wanted to go home, but yet I didn't feel alone. As we sat on the side of that highway in Idaho, I prayed to the Lord that He would watch over us and keep us safe, and I knew that He was with us. I truly felt the Lord's presence in this moment, and I grew in my faith a lot more after this experience. 
Later that night, our group sat around in our motel hallway and we cried and talked about how we were feeling. One guy told us that this was the first time he had prayed in five years and that he really felt the Lord watching over and comforting him. This conversation made me realize that sometimes the Lord throws obstacles our way because we are getting too comfortable and our faith needs to be tested. He won't give us anything that we can't handle, and He is always guiding us and providing for us. I am forever thankful for this trip because I not only had an amazing experience, but I grew in my faith a lot more and understand more about the Lord and what His presence feels like. John 10 verses 11 through 18 also reminds us that the Lord is our good shepherd. God tells us that he would lay down his life for his sheep and that he will leave the 99 to find the one who is lost. These verses have really spoken to me amongst the COVID-19 pandemic. I felt very alone and confused and at first I was angry at God for taking away so many of the plans that I was excited for. My anxiety was high during these times and I struggled with not being able to make a plan for every day and for not being able to do my daily activities. But as I read the Bible and dove into the word more, I realized that God needed me to have rest. He needed me to take a break from the chaos of school sports and plans. John chapter 10 verses 11 through 18 reminded me that even though I couldn't physically be with my people, I was never alone because God was there beside me. I felt his presence a lot during quarantine and was encouraged by the message that God knows us and cares for us and he wants us to spend more time with him and to get to know him better. As my senior year is coming to a close and I will soon embark on a new chapter of life, I feel nothing but peace and love. First Presbyterian Church of New Bern is a big part of who I am today, and I wouldn't be where I am without the people here. As a child, I definitely counted all of the candles and the lights during the sermons and snuck books in to read, but now I understand the importance of having a church and listening to sermons. I'm so thankful to have been able to attend youth group here, be confirmed into this church, serve as a youth council member my junior year, and now I have the opportunity to serve on the session as an education elder for the youth. First Presbyterian Church has opened many windows of opportunities for me, and I'm so grateful for the amount of support that I've received from the people in this congregation. I want to thank my youth group leaders, Daywan, Miss Kathy, and Miss Janet, Mr. Madison, and Mariana for constantly encouraging me and for always giving me advice and being willing to talk after a hard week. Youth group has definitely been a highlight of my time here at First Presbyterian, and I will miss it so much. Serving as an elder has been an amazing experience as I have learned more about the church and the process and have been able to work with amazing people. I will be attending Washington and Lee in Lexington, Virginia this fall, where I hope to follow in my father's footsteps to become an attorney. I hope to find a church in Lexington and will continue to grow in my relationship with the Lord. I feel very prepared for college and beyond with the love and support that I have received from my parents, my sisters, and my church family. I am rooted in the faith and know that the Lord is always with me. He is my shepherd, and I do not have to fear because he leads me beside still waters, and I will walk with him and not grow weary. Goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. He is the good shepherd, and he will follow us and choose us, even when we don't always run after him. He knows us. My cup surely runs over. Thank you. Let us now join together in affirming our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
with boldness. Let us offer our prayers to the shepherd of our souls. I will say, God of goodness and mercy, and you will respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. We pray for the church in every place. Gather us together and make us one, one in ministry and mission to the world, so that there will be one flock, one shepherd. God of goodness and mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world. Anoint all leaders with your wisdom so that they will use their power to help the poor and defend the vulnerable. God of goodness and mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this community. Strengthen those who work each day to heal the sick, welcome the outcasts, and help sisters and brothers in need. God of goodness and mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for friends and loved ones, comfort all who are suffering, walk with them through dark valleys and restore them body, mind, and soul. God of goodness and mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, by the power of your spirit, help us to keep your commandments and to love one another with the love of Jesus, in whose holy name we pray, the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In the name of the Good Shepherd, love one another. May the goodness and mercy of God follow you all the days of your life, and at your life's end, may you dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.